the mother was so many things, and one of them was an artist. The mother was born in Paris in 1878, just before the famous Eiffel Tower was completed, during what is remembered as La Belle Époque, the beautiful period, when Paris was the cultural and political center of the world, as well as a hub of modern innovation, with the first cars and electricity in the streets. When the mother was young, Paris held three world fairs and hosted the second Olympic Games, which may have influenced part of her vision for Auroville. The Paris Opera House was the new centerpiece at the heart of a freshly renovated district designed by Baron Haussmann. Showcasing the country's rich culture and growing prosperity, it became the financial and commercial center of the capital. The area's old houses and narrow streets were torn down, giving way to wide boulevard and modern stone buildings. The mother was born in this new landmark area, just behind the opera house, on a street like this at 41 Boulevard Haussmann, in a building similar to this one. Beautiful private homes were built in the area. This one belonged to the Commando family, the mother's paternal relatives through marriage. The mother began her art studies with private lessons at home when she was eight. One of her works was exhibited in the 1892 World Exhibition of Black and White Art when she was just 14. And it was then that she started to give painting classes to children. This was a time of change when the artistic world was shifting from the classical mode to a new revolutionary spirit and technique called Impressionism. This is Toulouse Lautrec, painting in this new style from his Montmartre garret. The National School of Fine Arts didn't accept women, but there was a new school, the Académie Julian, which did. The school where many famed painters studied, such as Matisse, Bonnard, Marcel Duchamp, Fernand Léger, and Khalil Gibran. However, there were separate classes for women. The mother was accepted at Académie Julian when she was 15. We see her here on the right, the last young woman in the second row. At the Académie Julian, she was trained in the classical style. This painting and the following works date from the last decade of the 19th century and the first decade of the 20th century. The traditional themes were interiors, portraits. We see her signature, Mira Alfasa. Still life. She won a competition for this one for her brushwork technique. She painted the homes of well-known people of the time that she knew, artists and musicians. Portraits were the only way to preserve someone's image in this time before mass photography took hold. This was her maternal grandmother, Mira Ismaloon. And she did this one, painted on a small piece of ivory of her friend Madame Valentine, who died young in childbirth. The mother recognized her later on at the ashram living again as Maggie Nitchi. 
Through her grandmother's connections and the Académie Julian, the mother met Henri Morisset, a fellow art student. They married in 1897 when she was 19. They collaborated on this fresco in 1898 for the Church of St. James in the city of Pau. As she was smaller, she painted parts at the bottom. Together they settled in the Place de Clichy area of Paris, a few minutes north of the opera. On the street corner to the right, behind the tree, was the famous Café Vepleur, which still exists, as painted by Henri Morisset. The woman in the painting is not the mother. A woman of good standing at that time would never have sat alone in a café. They lived in a nearby street, similar to this one, at 15 Rue Le Mercier. There was a big garden at the back in which Henri had his art studio, with a passageway leading to their apartment on the first floor. They had a son named André, captured in oils here by his mother. A few streets away from their home was the Villa des Arts, an enclave where artists like Cézanne and Renoir lived and worked and just a few more streets away was the Moulin Rouge, forever associated with Montmartre, just up the hill. At that time, Montmartre was a small, low-rent village, just outside the city limits, and was the center for the emerging new Impressionist style and its financially struggling painters. The mother, too, took active part in this new wave of creativity, where rigid detail gave way to impressions and the use of light. The mother said she had had an experience of universal oneness in this garden in Normandy. This approach was so obviously different from the classical mode that had been prevailing. The mother became accomplished in the new Impressionist style as well. Another new movement of the time was the growing interest in the Orient, with the new museum built by Émile Guimet, dedicated to the arts of Asia. This was the time of the first translations into French of the great Buddhist and Hindu texts. The mother created works inspired by this new influence. She had read Vivekananda's Raja Yoga, and in 1900, when she was 22, she met an Indian theosophist visiting in Paris who encouraged her to read the Bhagavad Gita. She was also influenced by Buddhist works like the Dhammapada, which she later commented on at length at the ashram. Through her brother, Matteo, she met the occultist Max Theon and became involved in his cosmic movement. She then led a study group called IDE, IDEA, and contributed to the journal The Cosmic Review. In 1906 and 1907, she went to Tlemcen, in Algeria, to study with Theon and his wife Alma. These new interests led to new encounters, and through her cosmic movement contacts, her first meeting with Sri Aurobindo. This portrait of Sri Aurobindo was made by the mother's Paris friend and student, the Danish painter Johannes Olenberg when he went to Pondicherry in 1913. The landmark meeting of the mother and Sri Aurobindo took place the next year, in March 1914. After her return to France, the mother went to Japan where she stayed until her return to Pondicherry in 1920.
In Japan, she continued to paint, mastering traditional themes, styles, and skills, including Japanese calligraphy. This is a painting she made in 1918 of the wife of the Japanese nationalist Okawa, who was a great admirer of Sri Aurobindo. We see here her new artistic signature, like a block print stamp. Her good friend was Madame Nobuko Kobayashi. The mother's painting shows her preparing traditional medicine. It was a lifelong friendship. Madame Kobayashi came to Pondicherry in 1959. The mother met and painted people of renown. The poet Hirasawa Tetsuo, who also came to visit the mother in Pondicherry in 1924. The daughter of the Prime Minister of China. And she sketched Rabindranath Tagore, who she first met in 1916 and again in 1919. This is her self-portrait of the time, in that famous black dress. Here she is in 1918 with Dorothy Hodgson, who went with her from London to Japan and then to Pondicherry in 1920. She became known as Data and was present on November 24, 1926, Sri Aurobindo's City Day. Of course, the mother sketched Sri Aurobindo. This was done in 1935. During the 30s and 40s, she painted the first disciples. We see Pavitra and Nolini. This one is of Barnin Kumar Ghos, Sri Aurobindo's brother, done in 1920. She was still using the signature she adopted in Japan. Nolini Kantagupta joined Sri Aurobindo as a nationalist at age 17 and then became a sadak. This is a portrait of the French disciple Pavitra, still looking austere after his years in a lamasery in Mongolia. It dates from 1930 and shows the mother's new signature, the one we know so well. One of the first Tamil disciples was the well-known barrister Duraswamy. And there was Ali Aidari from a Muslim princely family from Hyderabad, whose entire family joined the ashram. This is Champak Lal, who served Sri Aurobindo and the mother so closely and faithfully. Anbu, who was the first yoga teacher to ashramites and many early Aurovillians. This is Vasuda, who the mother called My Little Smile. There were others portrayed by the mother, Chandulal, Purushottam, Anil Baran Roy. With perceptiveness and skill, she could catch a mood. Expressions. Personalities. This is Ali Haidari's French wife, Alice. Her pencil strokes could portray sensitivities. Eyes. Charm and joy. She sketched animals. We know how much she loved the receptiveness of cats. She could reveal their individualities and inner selves. It seems that Sri Aurobindo permitted this dog to enter his room whenever it liked. We all know of the mother's sensitivity to flowers and their spiritual messages. Her work also provides a visual history of herself, 
1934, 1935, 1947, 1948, 1948, and 1948. She used art as a tool for showing the spiritual path. She did this drawing for the ashram production of her play, Ascent to the Truth, in the significant year 1956. She portrayed inner experiences and realities. This is her painting called An Apparition. This is divine consciousness emerging from the inconscient, using Sri Aurobindo's image done in the 1920s. She made this of Kuan Yin, Goddess of Mercy, for the cover of a book in Bengali by Nolini. This sketch was made for a child and shows the straight path of yoga shortening the roundabout natural process. Man at the bottom, and at the summit, the divine. Here's a personal illustration she made for Champak Lal. We see Champak Lal's brain and system of chakras with lots of vibrations and energy fields. The mother was a mentor for ashram artists. This is Pramod Kumar's painting that the mother named Heralds of the Supermental World. He made it on the night of February 29, 1956. This is Supermental Victory by Krishna Lal and his golden purusha, commented on by Sri Aurobindo. Champakla was a pioneer with what became the ashram's distinctive marbling style. The mother called this one by Champakla, Fight of a Luminous Will. Here is Golden Doors by ashramite Priti Ghosh a respected painter throughout India. Preeti made this work based on these lines from a poem by Sri Aurobindo, On the waters of a nameless infinite, my skiff is launched. An unseen hand controls the rudder. The mother mentored Ashwamide Huta in her work. Here are two of Huta's illustrations for poems by Sri Aurobindo, in addition to her famous illustrations of Savitri. It was Huta who painted this emblematic work called Spirit of Auroville. Beauty is an integral part of the spirit of Auroville. As Sri Aurobindo has written, beauty is his footprint showing us where he has passed. Mm -hmm.